Hey gang, Tim here at Core Electronics, and today we're checking out all the development and expansion boards available from PyCom. PyCom is a constantly groundbreaking company which produces a lot of really cool development boards and expansion shields. They have a large focus on multiple network connectivity, particularly in regards to low power, long distance information transfer. So I've gone through and found all the differences between the boards that they have and set up some detailed tables that you can refer to at our online write-up for this guide. Whether you're a PyCom pro or just discover this world, this guide will be valuable. Every maker scenario is different. So this tutorial will aid you to choose the best PyCom board for the situation. Now worth noting, these development boards are all microcontrollers and a microcontroller is a compact integrated circuit designed to govern a specific operation in an embedded system. In simpler terms, these all have computer systems that run on a chip that does a job. Each board contains an integrated processor, memory, and programmable input output peripherals, which are used to interact with things connected to the chip. These devices can easily fit in the palm of your hand and spur both innovation and creativity in makers. The PyCom FiPi is particularly groundbreaking with five network connectivity crammed into a chip of tiny proportions. So here I brought to the table a table, fancy that, outlining the important features of every PyCom development board. This table can also be found online as a quick reference point and it will make it easier to decide what PyCom development board would be the best fit for your particular maker project. So the main thing to realize with this table is that boards higher up have more connectivity methods than the ones lower down. And this is the main difference between these devices. I'm just gonna quickly go through this table. At the top, we have FiPi, which is five different communication methods. That's Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Sigfox, LoRa, and Cellular. The LoPi 4 has four different connectivities. The only one that it doesn't have that the FiPi does have is the Cellular LTE, the GPY, this is Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and cellular LTE. And the SciPi, this is Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and Sigfox. And the YPi has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Now, all these boards are incredibly lightweight, weighing in at five or less grams. For instance, the YPi weighs only five grams. They're also all incredibly energy efficient and all can go to deep sleep, pulling around 25 microamps. PyCom development boards have a number of different ways to both receive and transmit data. By knowing the advantages of certain methods of communication, you'll be able to deploy the best solution. Not every project needs five connectivity methods like the astounding FiPi offers. Now, upon realizing the huge distances you can transfer information using some of these boards, truly it opens up a world of creative and innovative maker projects that you might've thought impossible before. So for example, everyone knows about Wi-Fi connectivity, which is perfect for transmitting information around a household. And everyone knows about Bluetooth connectivity, perfect for close range distances. But the LoRa and the Sigfox methods of connectivity are significantly less known or even understood, but each method offer effective information transmission of over 40 kilometers long. So remote monitoring and weather stations are the two projects that instantly spring to my mind using this kind of technology. LoRa, this is a spread spectrum technology that uses standard radio transmissions to encode data inside radio waves. LoRa can also be known as LoRaWAN and it gets its name from long range as it can transfer this information more than 40 kilometers depending on the terrain. Outback areas with unobstructed skylines allow for the best range. This technology is capable of sending very energy efficient communications. This means you can run a device for years on a small battery whilst connecting to the internet when necessary to send these small messages. So Sigfox, the other connectivity method, is a similar technology. However, LoRa uses a wider radio wave band than Sigfox, making it very reliable. The base stations are also much cheaper than Sigfox. So this has resulted in both commercial and community developments of LoRa worldwide. For example, Core Electronics has created a number of these base stations around our area, freely usable by the community. And this particular connectivity is available only to the LoPi and the FiPi. 
Sigfox. Now this is a narrowband technology that uses standard radio transmissions to encode data inside radio waves. It connects your device to the internet through a Sigfox operator network. This is a proprietary technology and requires a subscription to access the Sigfox network. It has an effective range of 30 to 50 kilometers and it has great scalability with billions of devices capable of being connected to the network. One of the best features is it allows for a very low power consumption communication. This connectivity is available on the SciPy, the LowPy and the FiPy. Now, the other option available with this technology is cellular LTE. LTE standing for long-term evolution, which is a 4G mobile communication standard. Mobile phone networks are both a stable and trusted method of information transfer that have been operating for decades. PyCon boards give the option of being connected 24 seven to the network or performing more energy efficient connectivity. In these energy efficient methods, the microcontroller spends most of its time in a deep sleep, awakening only briefly to send off a small burst of information. Now, quick note, all these boards already have an input antenna already installed. However, when using LoRa, Sigfox or cellular LTE, it is recommended to use an external antenna. Without an external antenna, connecting to these networks can damage the microcontroller. It's also worth knowing the PyCom 5 Pi board and the PyCom G Pi board both have nano SIM card sockets, which are found underneath on the bottom of the PCB. You can go to our website and it will show you a diagram of how to install one of these nano SIM cards. Now, diving into the PyCom expansion boards. Brought to the table is a table, once again, of the three expansion boards. So we have the expansion board 3.1, which looks like this. We have the PySense, which isn't with us today. And we have the PyTrack, which looks like this. So these expansion boards have the microcontrollers installed directly onto them. And it does so by seating them on those pins like so. So these boards can be used as a shield in combination with any of the above PyCom developer boards. Shields are boards that can be plugged on top of the other PCB to extend the capabilities. Shield boards like this can also be referred to as add-on modules. In regards to the similarities, they all have micro SD cards, USB serial ports, USB to serial converter, JSP LiPo battery connector, power MUX battery charging, LED indicating user input buttons. They can all also be powered using the micro USB or via the JST style battery connector. So picking up the expansion board 3.1, this differs from the others as it has a full set of headers fitted, a safe button, a user push button, and reverse voltage protection. It also has an LED indicator for user input and power. This weighs in at only 18 grams. Smick little package. Next, we're gonna look at the PyTrack, which offers a 12-bit precision three-axis accelerometer, a GNSS GLONASS GPS, which means it can effectively tell you exactly where it is anywhere on the surface of this globe, a partial header with 10 pins, and this weighs in at 11 grams. Finally is the PySense, which unfortunately isn't with us today, but only because they fly out of the door. This also has a 12-bit precision three-axis accelerometer, an ambient light, temperature, humidity, and barometric pressure sensor, and partial headers with 10 pins, and that bad boy weighs in at 11 grams as well. So I've shown you how to seat them. So let's jump into the computer. You can see that we have heaps of online tutorials for all these products, all done by the infallible Chris. And these guys will seriously take you from zero to hero with this technology really fast. So in conclusion, I really hope this has illuminated the world of PyCom to you. These are really amazing pieces of technology, and until next time, stay cozy.